researchers did get DNA and RNA out of ancient mammoths that have been found in the permafrost, and that's great because it does get us much closer to cloning them, and de-extinction could soon be a reality, but there's something else going on. It's not just that we want to understand ancient creatures, there's a ticking time bomb that we're all very concerned about. There has been a lot of media around things like ancient viruses and other pathogens being defrosted and then suddenly entering the human population, and a lot of that is really just science fiction. We're not going to get literal zombies, that's just not going to happen. That concern is not wholly irrational, though. You see, some conditions that were had by ancient peoples, including Neanderthals like smallpox, have been eradicated from the world, but they're not completely gone. In fact, Neanderthals have been found infected with smallpox, and since then we have a lot of rules on what you actually are allowed to revive. Nothing that affects mammals. And that's because even given the utmost safety protocol, it's really freaking dangerous to work with. But things don't just stay frozen and then that's the end of it. The whole world is defrosting unevenly, mind you, kind of like a microwave. Even if we don't make attempts to revive things that we find in the ice, there is always the possibility that foraging animals could end up eating it. Or reindeer, for example. So there is a very difficult balance to be had in which we try to handle these things responsibly as humanity, and also try to prevent really terrible consequences, and that may actually require that we start reviving these things so we can understand them. So that if anything terrible does happen, we are prepared. There's also the other issue around all of this, and it comes with communicating science online, that scary things get clicks, right? But if we start making things sound really scary and they don't end up being a big issue at all, that means that if we really do have a big problem, people aren't going to believe it. That is an impossible balance. So these things do need to be studied. They need to be done responsibly. And we also, you know, as a whole scientific community, need to not alarm the public until it really is time for alarm. But on to cloning mammoths. Is it possible to clone a mammoth? Yes, and we will have the technology. Is it reasonable or easy? Absolutely not. Is this part of it? Also, yes. If you just have a genome and you assemble a genome, you can make artificial life. It's been done. I've talked about microplasma laboratorium, entirely artificial life, and even eukaryotes, like yeast, which have been made entirely through artificial means. When it comes to just having the genome, no, that is not enough for something as complex as us or even elephants. We can recreate it. We can take cells that have damaged DNA and fill in the gaps, but what we are lacking is the context. There's a reason why you can make gametes, like sperm and eggs, and clone animals, but it's really difficult because there's genetic imprinting between the mother and the father. You need to know what the epigenetics should look like, and that's part of what figuring out the RNA is about. We don't just need the DNA. We need to know the entire context around it. Now, I do want to tell you, because this is important, there are no dire wolves. That company that said that they cloned them did not. They just made wolves with really big dog genes. And that is also their plan for mammoths. In fact, they aren't even trying to take an elephant. What they want to do is make mice that have the mammoth gene for being very hairy. It is just not actually cloning. But we could clone a mammoth. It would require our friends the elephants. And it would still be very difficult. Could you engineer an elephant to look very much like a mammoth? Yeah, probably. I kind of understand why people would want to, but I think it's a bad idea. If we truly wanted to clone a real mammoth, that could be done using the cells that we already have. You would need an elephant to incubate it. And I have talked to some evolutionary biologists about this. Apparently, elephants have rather similar reproductive cycles, and they also have very similar behaviors. So. Hypothetically, a mammoth could learn to be a mammoth from an elephant parent. Most elephants are, you know, endangered. Not all. That's true. It just seems like a colossal, pardon the pun if you're in the know, a colossal waste of time. Understanding the past is great, and yeah, I get it, you could turn it into a zoo that could probably generate funds for actual ecology and preserving the environment. But I personally am against creating undue suffering for animals when there's really better things that we could spend our time doing. If we ever clone a mammoth, I'll tell you about it. Follow for more.